In 2015, leaders from 191 countries attending the United Nations Conference of Parties and Paris agreed to do their part to limit global warming to two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial temperatures. As part of the Paris Agreement, countries are required to submit their plans to limit greenhouse gas emissions to the United Nations every five years. These plans are called nationally determined contributions. Countries were required to submit their initial NDCs in 2015, and their second NDCs were supposed to be submitted last year. But due to the pandemic, the UN delayed the due date to 2021. Just under 60% of the countries that agreed to the Paris Agreement have submitted new NDCs in 2021. And Friday, the UN released its summary of all the NDCs available at this time. And the bottom line is that based on these NDCs, scientists expect the planet to warm 2.7 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by the end of this century. And that level of warming will be catastrophic. That's exactly how UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres described it, catastrophic. Based on the NDCs, global greenhouse gas emissions are expected to be 54.8 gigatons by 2025 and 55.1 gigatons by 2030. Remember, parties that agreed to the Paris Agreement agreed to work together to limit global warming to just 2 degrees Celsius. And in order to do that, scientists said global emissions must be reduced by 25% from 2010 levels. The latest estimates based on the NDCs forecast global emissions to be in fact 16% higher than they were in 2010. And we all remember the 2018 IPCC report that said actually two degrees of warming would be disastrous. So the new goal should be to limit warming to just one and a half degrees. Low lying nations especially cannot afford warming above 1.5 degrees because this could lead to insurmountable sea level rises. To hit 1.5 degrees of warming by the end of this century, emissions in 2030 need to be 45% lower than they were in 2010. And again, remember, the current NDCs plan for emissions to be 16% higher in 2030 than they were in 2010. For the countries that submitted new NDCs in 2021, Greenhouse gas emissions are expected to be 12% lower in 2030 than they were in 2010. Now, the new plans of these countries are more aggressive than what they submitted initially in 2015, but they're still not enough to achieve the target of a 16% drop by 2030. Now, you've probably heard of a carbon budget. It was referred to in the most recent IPCC report, and it's a way for scientists to set a threshold on the amount of carbon dioxide equivalents that humans can emit before the planet is locked into a warming greater than 1.5 degrees. Based on these NDCs, at the end of the decade, there will be just 55 gigatons of CO2 left in the carbon budget, which is basically just one year's worth of CO2 emissions. So what does 2.7 degrees mean? It means that the extreme heat events that used to happen just once every 50 years are now more than 14 times more likely to happen. Extreme droughts will be more than four times as likely to happen. We'll have stronger hurricanes, more extreme weather, over twice as many floods due to the extreme amounts of rain in certain regions. Sea levels will be higher, coastal cities will be flooded, and low-lying countries will no longer exist. And to state the obvious, the UN report says, climate change is projected to slow economic growth. Yes, it's hard to have a functioning economy in an area that has been burnt down, flooded, or torn apart by climate fuel disasters. One interesting aspect of this summary is its finding that many of the developing countries in DCs contain conditional commitments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions if they can get access to the much needed and frankly, much deserved financial resources. This will be a major part of the upcoming negotiations at COP26, 
whether or not the countries that got rich off of burning fossil fuels will support financially the sustainable development of other countries. The original pledge was to mobilize $100 billion by 2020 for developing countries, but that goal has been nowhere close to achieved. But the bottom line is this, we cannot give up. We still have over eight years before the end of the decade. These forecasts are based on existing NDCs, existing plans that countries have to manage their carbon emissions. So that means countries must step up and put forward more aggressive plans. We cannot wait. Countries must act now.